I wouldn't be working on this so hard if I didn't think that uh, there really was something here. And, you know, and I've, uh, you know, I've known that for a long time. You know, it's, it's kind of more than just, well, you know, this is scientifically, engineeringly interesting. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I'm driven to do this and I know that there's, we can make this work. Um, um, I know there's something here and I've known for a long time. It's not like I'm just scientifically interested. I'm driven. What does that sound like, chat? Does that sound like anybody on your screen right here? Yeah, that's what it sounds like when somebody finds out that they know there's magical technology and they know the world's never going to believe it and they're just trying their best to get the information out. That's what it sounds like right there. For the lay people in our audience, I want to start out by asking, what is a coherent matter wave? What is a coherent matter wave generator and, and what led you to develop this? making a laser out of particles instead of photons. So, you know, with, with the laser, um, the reason why it's so bright is you've put all the photons uh, into the same phase, into coherence. So they're all stacked on top of each other. And that makes the intensity go up um, as the, the square of the number of, of photons instead of just linearly, which gives you this, this huge laser um, sort of uh, power. So we've figured out a way to do that with particles uh, versus photons. Now, particles are are what's called fermions instead of bosons, and we've figured out a way using something called the Arjuna. And, and it's crazy because this, this invention has like you know five different components that are all a little esoteric that come together to make it possible to make this this beam that's a million times more powerful than a laser. Or what I've been most excited about lately is the application to atomic scale additive manufacturing and direct manufacturing so that you can uh, use this coherent beam that you create uh, by putting the fermions in coherence using the Arnold bomb effect. Um, you can use it to uh, write uh, features down to 0.2 nanometers. You can use it for doing like new sorts of uh, chemistry because you know, the way that 0.2 nanometers, 0.2 nanometers is getting really, really, really close to atomic scale manufacturing at this point. That's really tiny. Yeah, somebody's saying how crazy the science is. Go ahead and try us. Go ahead and try us, chat. We, You tell me that there's some crazy effects that are coming together. This conversation is about to go completely off the rails, chat. It's about to go completely off the rails. I hope you're ready for this. Here we go. Get excited. By the way, just a reminder, guys. I think it was Wednesday or Monday. I've lost track of the days. One of those days, we were talking about quantum tunneling being connected to fusion go back to one of the last two live streams one of the last two quantum tunneling potentially being connected to fusion remember that to think about this is that the atoms or electrons which are the particles we're talking about they're really waves right they're actually yeah. waves and have a frequency um and people have shown this you know and they they interfere with each other you get interference patterns People have measured the waves of vitamins and, and other things. So, you know, particles are, um, are waves. And so by controlling the phase of those waves using our coherent matter beam device, we can do new, brand new chemistry that hasn't been um, possible before by combining the waves, kind of think of it as a frequency co combination mm -hmm. of atoms. And by doing that, uh, like I said, you can do new chemistry, but you can do atomic scale additive manufacturing where it's not you know it's like the start of the replicator right you can uh you'd be able to build uh something um you know from its atomic parts into a, a structure and do that at the the atomic scale that holy is crap he said it chat literal replicator confirmed literal replicator 100 confirmed by lockheed martin senior fellow at lockheed martin top 0.1 percent chat if the man is saying it in a public podcast they probably already had it 20 years ago they probably already had it 20 years ago holy smokes it, it honestly it's more than just that he didn't just say we have replicators he says we can synthesize new elements did you guys hear that if it's all just waves if matter is just a wave and we get the waves in phase are we doing fusion are we doing fusion what does it mean when we combine the waves? we're just combining wave functions together
to me, that sounds like you're just playing God at that point. What it really sounded like, the first thing that came to my mind was element 115. Element 115. The Bob Lazar element. The first thing I would do if we could create stable waves and mix waves together to make new elements, I would make a super heavy element that could be used as a fuel source, an unlimited fuel source for interstellar travel. Why? Because there's nothing in outer space. There's no matter to pick up in outer space. On Earth, we can use the air and the water to make our plasma. But in outer space, we don't have that. So in outer space, I would want some super efficient element that can produce a huge amount of energy. He just said, okay, we can make a, re he's working on a replicator right now using his matter wave beam patent. And we can synthesize new elements, new elements. So yeah, we can do transmutation. We can do alchemy. We got everything is on the table. Everything. The future is crazy, chat. So how are they pulling that off? Oh, they're doing this quantum thing where they get all the wavelengths of the quantum particles to fit together. That sounds a lot like the quantum tunneling fusion that we were listening to like just a few days ago. So they've got super advanced microchips, floating balls of plasma flying around, free energy devices up the butt. These people have so much free energy devices, they're just like falling out of their pockets. Oops. Oops, another free energy device fell out over here, chat. Well, whatever, let that one go. We got five more over here. I mean, what is this world? How is all this just hidden? Atomtronics? We're just making up new words. Atomtronics. I just gonna guess that that just means Star Trek replicator type stuff, atomtronics. Even uh, higher energies, so higher frequencies, and therefore do things like make super heavy elements, right? Another thing I've been fascinated with, and you know, spent some time working on, is how to make super heavy elements. These are elements that are way up in the, you know, in the atomic scale that are predicted to be stable. Wait, wait. he's literally talking about Moscovium. What what other elements is he talking about here? Elements that are predicted to be stable that aren't? That's element 115. He's literally talking about it here. Am I the person that has to make this interview go viral? This is a more interesting interview than any UFO interview I've ever heard in my whole life. And it connects to everything all the UFO people care about. Um, Stabilizing super heavy elements using coherent matter wave beams? Element 115, anybody? Does Bob Lazar even want to be vindicated? If Bob Lazar wants to be vindicated, he might want to talk to Charles Chase, might want to watch this interview, kind of vindicating Bob Lazar right now.